You can hear me at the back, we're good. Good morning. Um, show of hands, who went to Aerosmith? How was it? The Rock? All right, fine, good. Well, good morning, welcome to day five. If you've been here since Sunday of Cisco Live, I hope you've enjoyed uh, everything so far. Um, introductions first, my name is Ben Munro. I'm a product marketing manager in the security business group. And Nitin Kumar is a te uh, technical marketing engineer in the business, uh, security business group. And I'll introduce one more gentleman, Sergio Castro, uh, in the middle of the audience there from Elastica. And I hope the first question that you've got is why are we talking about Elastica? Um, what I'm going to do is spend uh, 10 minutes um, at most of your time just to give you a brief overview about what we're doing here. And then Nitin is going to walk you through some use cases and a demo of our cloud access security solution that we are partnering with Elastica to deliver. So I've got a very minimum number of slides to set the scene of why we're doing this, and then we'll move into the technical aspect uh, with Nitin. So uh, cloud access security, um, the market calls it, the, the, the market calls the company's cloud access security brokers. We talk about SaaS visibility. All of this is talking about the use of cloud applications um, and how they are becoming as integral to business as email uh, is and how that's creating a security problem. Um, the problem is we're all using them and at last count there are 5,000 commonly used cloud apps which are starting to give the IT teams headaches because of all the data leakage, the compliance issues and the threat vector that this creates. There are two ways of looking at the threat vector that the cloud application usage creates. The first of these is shadow IT. So it's the fact that the IT departments and security departments don't know which applications are being used. Um, and it's not, just, um, it's not just the marketing teams, the sales teams, um, IT departments are using unsanctioned apps. So of these 5,000 applications that are available, um, employees are using them without requesting. They're spinning up their own instances of file sharing apps, uh, marketing teams are using new CRM apps, and uh, IT doesn't have the governance that it used to have. The second lens is shadow data. So this is where uh, sanctioned apps are being used in unsanctioned ways. Um, and a majority of organizations, as you can see, have lost data or have suffered some breach due to the use of, of apps uh, being shared with third parties and data being shared outside the organization. And the common um, assumption we hear, the common misconception that we hear, is that um, the application providers are, uh, are securing their apps and so the responsibility lies with them. But there are two stats I'll give you. The first on the screen there shows that 75% of mobile apps failed basic security tests. But the other one, more scary, is that 50% of application um, uh, vendors uh, spend precisely zero dollars on their security. So this notion that you can give the responsibility of securing the app to the vendor is, is false. The responsibility for security lies with, lies with, with us. So, so Cisco has partnered with Elastica to deliver what we're calling cloud access security. And we say there are three uh, aims that security teams, three aims that IT teams should be looking to achieve through using cloud access security. The first of those is simple visibility, is to start to solve the shadow IT problem, understanding which apps are being used. But then it's extending beyond that, and it's offering some control. So once you've controlled and once you've sanctioned which apps are able to be used within an enterprise, you want to start controlling who's using those apps and what they're doing um, with, uh, with files, who they're able to share with, and what kinds of files are able to be shared. And the last of those then is being able to take action when you see unsanctioned behavior taking place in that cloud app environment. So I'm going to leave you with an infographic before I hand over to Nitin and just talk at a very high level about the solution that we are working with Elastica on. So right here you have the Cisco infrastructure, you have existing um, hardware and SaaS solutions from Cisco um, that are providing security such as your web security appliance, your ASA firewall or cloud web security, and these are all generating logs. Those logs feed into what Elastica calls its cloud SOC. So you have a dashboard that Nissim will show you that, that gives you visibility into, into cloud applications. And once you've ingested the logs into cloud SOC, you have an audit, uh, the audit app from Elastica. 
and this is solving shadow IT, or this is helping you address shadow IT, because it shows you which apps are running in your environment and allows you to, uh, or offers you alternative uh, safe apps if there are risky apps being used. Once you have a view of, of shadow IT in your organization, you're then able to, on an app by app basis, um, enable an API which will give you the ability to look deeper into that app, to find out what usage um, your users are, um, are, are gaining from that, what files are being shared, and extend control over those users into the app. So I'll leave it there. I'll hand over to Nissin, who's going to talk you through some use cases and go deeper into the way that the solution works. Thank you, Ben. Um, so today we want to talk about a few use cases of, of what you know, sort of Ben gave you a high-level overview of um, and how we can actually apply the solution to a uh, real-world environment. So uh, the first thing we're looking at is, is again, just a high-level architecture overview of the Elastic Cloud, Cloud Sock solution. Um, again, the previous infographic showed the four offerings or the four uh, uh, pieces of technology that run on the Elastica suite. So the first one we're looking at is Audit. So Audit will actually give uh, you as an administrator, excuse me, uh, visibility in the shadow IT. So even though you may have sanctioned apps like Box or Dropbox or, or Google Drive, you may not know what other cloud applications are running in your environment today. So your users may be using unsanctioned applications uh, that you have no idea about, and they could be sharing uh, sensitive data from those applications out to the cloud, and it's gone at that point. So Audit will give you that, that visibility piece. The next piece is Detect. So Detect uses a technology to determine specifically uh, threat risks for a user. So if a user is doing some anomalous behavior, uh, the threat score given to that user will actually be able to, to give an admin a view of, of which r users are risky and which are not risky. Um, and there's some proprietary algorithm that goes on how that's actually developed. At a high level, how that works is if a user is doing something anomalous, such as sharing a file uh, multiple times and you know within a specific window, their threat score actually goes up, right? And then an admin will be alerted uh, so they can actually get visibility of that specific user and, and see what they're doing. Next is protect. So this is where we actually take control or we can actually remediate certain uh, data points within uh, cloud applications. So audit gives you, you know, the full visibility. Protect actually goes and we can actually apply control to that. And lastly is investigate. So if we, if we do the before, during, and after phase, before being audit, during is protect, investigate would be the after piece of it where we're actually looking at reports and alerts that are generated uh, from the actual um, cloud application environment. So again, anything that the user does within that environment will actually get triggered and then we'll see reports from that. Now on the left are the log extraction and traffic redirection methods that we use today to actually push the logs to the Elastic Cloud Sock. So the first one is uh, called a Securelet, which is essentially an, uh, an API tool uh, that Elastic has developed to actually hook into different cloud uh, applications. Now today, they only apply, apply to a few applications such as drop, drop, uh, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, OneDrive, and it fully supports applications that actually use uh, API functionality. The next is what's called the Cloud Access Gateway. So th there's two methods to actually set this up. So one of them is called proxy chaining. So if you're not, not familiar with proxy redirection, it's essentially taking, uh, combining two proxies together. So I'm sending my traffic as a client to a proxy server and that's then sending it to another proxy server. So that's proxy chaining. The one we'll get into detail about today is the pack file method. So a pack file stands for proxy auto configuration file. And what that does is it lives in your client's browser and actually redirects traffic. So it's, a, it's essentially a text file that has a list of, list of statements built in that will redirect your user traffic to a specific destination um, as well. And the last method is how we actually extract log data. So this, the first two were specifically to apply policy. The last piece is how do we extract data for the audit functionality. So there's three ways to do that. The first way is from a, an ASA or a WSA, uh, we can actually extract logs via SCP or SFTP. So there's two methods to actually extract the logs from those devices. We'll actually focus on the SCP method a little bit uh, when, when we actually get into the demo. The second is a direct upload. So you can take a log file such as an access log from a, a web security appliance or an ASA and actually go in and uh, manually upload that data. 
And lastly, we're, we have what's called SpanVA, which is essentially a virtual machine that lives on the customer environment. So if you have a device that does not support uh, SCP or SFTP, you can use this specific SpanVA uh, software to actually collect that data. So again, just to highlight this, we want to go and look at our first use case, which is actually extracting logs um, from a WSA, which we have set up in our lab. And we'll go ahead and specifically look at the audit piece first. So we're extracting logs, looking at all the shadow IT that's exposed from our environment. And again, the method we're using for that is SCP. Again, just graphically showing you the two methods. So we have our direct upload method, and then we have the span VA method, which I described earlier, which is a data collector, essentially. And obviously, the third method is a direct upload you know, on the actual portal itself. So I'm going to briefly touch on setting up a WSA and how we actually uh, set the log files up. The reason we're focusing on this is for two reasons. One, we want to show you typically how, as an administrator, you'd go through and set up a device to, to do log extraction and set up a log subscription. Again, we can do this with an ASA as well. Um, and then future architecture will actually be able to do log extraction via Cloud Web Security. So if, if you're familiar with any Cloud Web Security services, you can actually use this as well. So the first thing uh, is most administrators use two types of logs for, for access. So they use a, a normal access log, and they also use W3C access logs as well. Now, there's essentially four ways to, you know, to set up log subscriptions on a, on a WSA specifically. Uh, one of them is to FTP them directly on the appliance. The second way is to FTP them to another FTP server. And we can do an SCP or a syslog push as well. The minimum version, if you do have a WSA today, is, is Async OS 7.7. .7. So as long as you have that version, we can support this solution. Again, just briefly want to touch upon what the two log types look like. Uh, we'll be focusing on the top, which is the access logs. And I'll just walk you through how we set this up on the device itself. So we actually set up a log, uh, log subscription. And then this is the actual subscription. So we, we uh, created a log name. We'll, we'll go ahead and just set up a rollover size, which is just the, the size, the, the maximum size of log that we actually want to send through. And the log style is squid. So if you're familiar with web server logs, this is, familiar, this is uh, you know, similar to that, uh, that format. Now, this is what happens on the Elastica side. Now we have our WSA set up to actually push logs. On the Elastica side, on their portal, we'll actually go and configure, you know, name the device. And it will give us details on where to push that traffic to. So since we're using SCP, we want to push it to this secure file server based on that username. And they'll give us a data source path specific to that customer. So all that customer data lives in that section, in that data source path. And if we jump back to the WSA, this is where we fill out this information on the actual uh, SCP configuration. So we have our host, the directory, and then the, the username. And then the standard port for this is uh, port 22. On the Elastica side, once a, a log, log subscription is generated on the WSA, it creates a key, uh, simply just a hash, which we then uh, place into the, the Elastica portal. So the reason we do that is we need the two sides to trust each other. So that's why we have keys on both sides, and Elastica needs to understand that it's actually receiving logs from this specific hash. So what we'll do now is we'll jump into the demo and actually show you what this looks like on the Elastica portal um, and, and sort of what the, the audit piece looks like. Actually, before we do that, I want to show you two things real quick. So what we're showing here is access logs. So if you're not familiar with access logs, if you're using a, a WSA or an ASA, you can actually look at traffic in real time uh, this is web proxy traffic, so anything a user accesses uh, through the web over 80 or 443, we'll be able to capture that data. So what we're looking at is a user goes to these sites, and we can actively capture that data and see what's happening with that web traffic. So um, we'll go and actually tail these logs, and we can pull up all this information here. So as a user browses, we can see all the different activities that's happening within that. 
So I described the two log types before, W3C and access logs. That's what these, this is at the bottom. These are the live access logs from our WSA as we're accessing uh, web traffic. So the second thing I want to show you is the SCP functionality uh, and the SCP success messages that we get on the WSA. So as an admin, I want to know, well, I've set this up. How do I know this works? How do I know I'm successfully pushing logs to Elastica to, to go ahead and look at my cloud traffic? So now what we're doing is we're setting up a log, log subscription to actually manually push to the Elastica Cloud SOC to that destination we set up. So we pointed it to an IP where it's actually going to send the, the, the traffic to. So what we're doing in the example here is we're, we're uh, doing a manual rollover. And once we do that, we should see a success message at the bottom. So that basically shows us that we're sending traffic to this address. And we're, it's, it's been a success, which means it was able to capture that, uh, that traffic. So what I want to do now is just briefly walk you through what this looks like on the Elastica portal side. So what you're looking at here is the, the it's called the Elastica Cloud SOC. And this view is just the global dashboard. So any activity that's done within your cloud app traffic is captured in the dashboard. So you have users. Uh, if you set up policies, we'll show that. And then all of the number of policy alerts as well. We can see the number of audited services, excuse me. Uh, threat alerts, and we can see where that traffic is actually being generated from as well. It's hard to see on the screen, but we can actually see locations. So it'll have a map of the globe and where all the different users are actually accessing that data. So I showed you how we actually set up the ASA with the Elastica Cloud SOC, how we're pushing logs. This is actually showing the success message on the Elastica side. So we can see the logs are being processed successfully. We set this up so it actually pushes the logs every hour or so. Um, so we're just getting logs every hour and we're processing that information. Uh, we can see our method, which is SCP, and the, uh, the type of device as well. In this case, it's, it's a Cisco WSA. Let's actually look at the, the interesting stuff now, which is the full audit that you receive when all these log information is, is actually collected. So this data is, is, is probably a span about uh, two months or so. It typically takes uh, roughly two weeks for actual log, informational logs to be collected and processed. Um, we have seen it take less time than that, but if you want to understand all of your cloud app usage, uh, you know, give or take two weeks for this actually to populate. Once you have it, we can see all this different information on the screen here. So just remember, these are We've only sent access logs, you know, web logs, to the Alaska Cloud SOC, and it's been able to pull out all these different pieces of information. So I'll actually go through and show you um, what these numbers actually mean. So as we can see, there's a couple different pieces of information. We have all of our, our different cloud applications that we've been able to extract. Uh, this is currently categorized by risky services, and I'll explain why something would be deemed risky versus not. So what I want to do is, is quickly show you um, what we can do inside of the audit application when we're looking at a particular cloud app. So I'm going to pick box as an example. So the first thing we're looking at is this, right? So what do all those numbers mean? This is called a business readiness rating. And as an administrator, uh, what is Elastica then is, is gave you the ability to actually pick and choose what criteria you want uh, to select for a cloud app usage. So that number is built on a, different, uh, a number of different pieces of information, as we can see here. So you can change um, the slider depending on what you want in an application. So if you want it to have brute force protection, for example, if you want it to have multi-factor authentication, or if you just want it to have better password, uh, uh, password policies, you can actually go and change that slider. Obviously, the most extreme would be a must-have. This is absolutely uh, what you need to have for a cloud app in your environment. Or you can just say don't care, right? So you could change that slider all the way down for all these different criteria. Now what that does is changes that business readiness rating and then sorts it um, in your actual audit view. This is a global setting, so this will also change all the other cloud apps as well. So you only have to do this one time. 
when you're actually setting this up, and it'll go and rearrange the scores for all of these. So again, the importance of the scores is we can just simply give you a list of all the cloud apps you have and say, here it is, this is all your, your data and this is what's running in your environment. But the ability to be able to sort this and find out what's actually risky based on what your organization requirements are is very powerful, right? We can easily see what's risky, what's not risky, and determine what to do with, with that traffic and what to do with those applications. Now, once all the scores are aggregated together for all of your uh, cloud app traffic, every single cloud app is given a score, there's an aggregate number that's created from that, and that's what's called the audit score. Obviously, in our case, we're pushing a lot of cloud app traffic, so it's, it's, we're given a 44. Typically, you'd obviously want to get that number as high as you can um, in order to make sure that you're compliant and to make sure that you have the most you know, secure cloud app usage in your environment. Now, there's two other things I want to show you in this, uh, in this view. One of them is called an infographic. This will actually give you a one-sheet summarized view of all the different pieces of information that we were able to pull out from the audit section. So this gives you all your SaaS services, the number of services that are at medium or high risk, there's a percentage that's given, and also all of your top five use services along with user data as well. So what we're looking at here is instead of a summarized view, we get a detailed view of all that information actually spelled out in the document. So the benefit of using this, which is called the risk assessment report, is it can be consumed by non-technical and technical users. So one of the things we noticed in our booth over the week is that a lot of people, when we're looking at this thing, I can give this to my manager or I can give this to um, an HR person. They'll be able to, to figure out what's happening within their environment and also work with those teams hand in hand. So we, uh, at the top, we can see risky services again. Um, so it gives us all these different pieces of information, service categories, uh, service hosting locations, for example. And then we get down to all the services, summarized view of all the discovered services in our environment as well. And then if we scroll down, we can actually see some recommendations that Elastica did provide based on our cloud app usage. So based on all the different scores and all the different um, cloud apps that we were found, it has recommendations on what may be the next steps to better protect yourself. Right, so it may talk about um, organizing based on using a, you know, a, a different, uh, uh, possibly using a, a different way to actually protect your data. The last piece, it talks about securelets, which I mentioned earlier, which is API-driven traffic. So that's the next piece we're gonna talk about. So the suggestion is, if you wanna better protect yourself, think about using securelets to actually go in there and take control of that. So we'll, we'll go and look at that now. So we talked about WSA and how we actually utilize the audit functionality within Elastica. Now we want to focus specifically on detect, protect, and investigate, with that, which are the other three offerings uh, for cloud access security. Uh, specifically, I want to focus on protect and investigate. Um, so let's look at the two methods we actually push traffic. So we're not just doing logs at this point, we're actually pushing user traffic live to the portal and actually doing uh, control for those uh, applications that are going through. Again, there's two ways to do this, securelet, which is the API-driven method, and we can do the gateway method, which is actually sending traffic via proxy chaining or, again, pack file that lives on the user browser. The differences between the two, obviously, is Securelet is limited to the, the types of cloud apps that it's looking at. Um, but the benefit is that it gives you, you know, full visibility over a specific cloud application. So if in your environment, if you have a sanctioned box account, for example, this would be perfect for you, right? If you want to monitor your corporate box account, you can actually look at all the different data points there and actually show you what that looks like on the portal. So again, this will lead us into our second use case, looking at uh, how we remediate traffic using the Securelet. In our case, we've set up a test box account to actually show you what this would look like uh, on that side. So let's look at the first policy that we set up. So when we get into protect, 
This is where we actually take control of that traffic and decide what to do with it. So let's walk through the first use case here, which is um, remediation for box. So what we want to do is we want to pinpoint box. We don't care who the user is. As long as they have access to the corporate box account, we want to go ahead and take action on that. We've set up what's called Content IQ. So essentially, the solution itself will be able to pull out different pieces of information based on compliance. So if you work for a hospital or if one of your customers is, is a hospital or um, you know, if they're a government agency, there are certain compliance requirements, HIPAA, PII, PCI, et cetera. The Content IQ engine will actually be able to pick those pieces out and, and tell you exactly um, you know, what's in there and be able to, to, to disseminate that information. You can also customize that. If you have part numbers or SKUs or anything else you don't want to get exposed, we can actually set that up using a, a match. So in this case, we have a file called a Cisco rumor uh, about an upcoming acquisition, and we may not want to uh, share, we may not want to have someone to share that out before it's sanctioned to be released. So we set up a keyword called Nutanix uh, with the Content IQ profile, and as soon as it matches that keyword, we should be able to go and, and do some remediation. Again, exposure type is public. There, there's three types of exposures, public, internal, and external. In our case, in our uh, test box account, it's just public files, but in, in most cases, it's gonna be internal or external for your corporate box accounts. Um, lastly, threat score, which we discussed, is based on the threat score that's given to a user. We'll, we'll skip over that section. Um, we do wanna be notified, so as an admin, it can just send out alerts as soon as something is triggered. And lastly, our access settings. Uh, which is to delete the shared link. So this basically means that when we match that document, if I as a user try to share that document, it should remove the link on the back end, uh, given that uh, you know, the API functionality will do that for us. So let's jump into our box account. We'll actually pick out that document that I mentioned. So we could see here, there's a number of different keywords that actually match uh, that, that word, right? So there's Nutanix here. It's in a few different places. So what I want to do is go ahead and share that document. Now the first time I attempt to share it, it will come up. And the reason is that this is an API driven event, which means that there has to be an event that triggers the API to actually do something with that, that traffic. So Box knows that, okay, well you shared a document, this is where Elastica comes in the back end and says, what do you want me to do with that? And in this case, we've set up a policy that says, well, if a user tries to share this, let's go and remove that link. So in a few seconds, we'll actually see the remediation in effect. Now, I quickly want to show you what this would look like in the investigate section. So again, this is the reporting engine that actually runs on the cloud sock itself on the portal that will show us all the alerts and all the live uh, the live activity that's happening within our account. So we could see at 9.28, uh, which was about a minute ago, we got an alert that said that you violated policy, a user went ahead and tried to share CiscoRumor.pdf. If I try to share that same exact link, now it's removed. So what happened is within a few seconds, uh, you know, I'm a user, I tried to share it, it hit the policy and now that link is actually removed. The link is essentially dead. So anyone that has this link going forward, if they try to share it with someone else, they try to refresh their page, it will no longer exist. So this is just one example of how we can utilize a secure lit to actually remediate traffic uh, for your cloud app usage and protect your data. So at this point, the data is protected. No one else will have this, uh, this link. Or if, even if they have it, they won't be able to access that information. Now, I mentioned Content IQ earlier about how it can actually go and pick out uh, different pieces of information from a document. Um, I do want to show you what that looks like from the SecureLit menu itself. So as we can see, in our box account, we have multiple documents that are listed out, right, with different types of content in them. What Content IQ has done is automatically, without the user having to set up anything, it's gone and picked out, based on the document type, what types of, of uh, content is in there. So it could be PII, HIPAA, we have a file in there that has source code in it, and uh, we have some, some documents that may be in violation of PCI compliance as well, um, right? So credit card numbers, social security numbers, for example. 
uh, content types. So based on that information, we'll be able to figure out what type of document it actually is, whether it's a health document, a legal document. So that can help you organize you know, the exposure types and, and what you want to do and where you want to store that information. You may want, not want to store that information in a box account if you know that it has legal information in it. Uh, we can also look at the file types uh, based on the extensions. And then this actually gives you an overview of some, the specific files and what they have contained in them. So let's take a look at one of those. Right, so we have a, um, an intake form which contains HIPAA information. So we can actually pull out that information. It'll tell us for each document type or file type what type of compliance it, it may be in violation of, right? So this document, if it's shared, it could be a HIPAA violation right away. So again, that was the SecureLit menu, so API-driven SecureLit menu specifically for our Box account. So next, we want to show the, the gateway method, which is uh, instead of using SecureLit, we can actually go in and uh, look at diff a number of cloud apps and take control of those cloud apps uh, because we're not limited to just that one uh, API uh, tool, right? So let me just walk you through the requirements for that. So the difference between the two, gateway and API, there's a, there's a few differences. Gateway is implemented inline, meaning that instead of just remediation and relying on an API tool, we can actually do something active, such as block traffic. So if we try to share a file, it'll actually go and block that, and that's something that the secure link can't do. Um, obviously, real-time interaction, we can do something immediately before, uh, as opposed to automated, right? We had to wait a few seconds for that remediation to take place. Uh, Obviously, the downside of gateways, we, there are some additional uh, deployment steps we have to take as far as setting this up. On the, on the SecureLit side, all we would have to do is actually go in to the portal and just download the SecureLit with our login details, and it connects us up to our specific cloud application. So this is all the requirements we need for the gateway component. So we need a pack file. We need a certificate to actually secure our traffic. And because we're looking at HTTPS traffic primarily in these cloud applications, we want to make sure we can actually look inside that traffic and have that application trust us. And lastly is what's called an SSO helper. So that's actually a browser extension. So we have one for Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome. And what that does is allows us to redirect the traffic uh, from a user uh, to our SSO environment first. And that's how we actually authenticate that and figure out who the user is and then be able to, to show you that information in our, in our logs. So those are three components. Pack file, uh, which is, again, the proxy configuration in your browser, get the certificate, and your SSO uh, helper. So I'll show you where the pack file would typically live. We're using Firefox, so if we go under network settings, right, we have a pack file there. So same section where you normally configure a proxy server is where your pack file would live today. So let's go back to the policy and show you what we're doing with this, with this rule here. So instead of remediation, let's say we want to actually block uh, file sharing. So if we look at uh, our specific example, again, we'll use Box since we have that set up. Uh, our Box account, any user. In this case, we don't want a user to share with gmail.com. So if I'm a user and I try to share a confidential file uh, to anyone with gmail.com, we should block it. Now, you can make this as broad or as specific as you need to, right? You can do an anyone share policy which says, I don't want this to be shared with anyone outside of this box account. So that's something we can actually implement using the gateway method. Uh, in this case, we're being very specific with a single email address, that any email address that matches gmail.com. Again, we have our threat score. Our notification would be the same. We want to get an alert as an admin to send, that, to send an alert once this policy is triggered. And lastly, instead of remediation, now we want to actually block that traffic. So that's what we have set up is blocking sharing for those files. So we'll go and show you that now. I'm, I'll go and pick any file. Um, because we've done this at a global level, any file should, should be able to should work here. So 
So again, you can be specific with the document types, with the file name itself. So if you only have a specific number of documents you don't want to be shared, you can actually uh, change that in the actual portal itself. So again, we'll go ahead and try to send out an email, or excuse me, share this file with the gmail.com address. So immediately we see that it was blocked, right? So the, the gateway went in there, uh, Elastica said, well, th this uh, is going to be blocked for gmail.com, go and apply that block. The email was not sent out and we get a policy alert as well, notifying the user that you violated policy. At the same time, there's an email being sent to the admin that can go in there and decide what to do with that user since he tried to share a, uh, uh, a file that wasn't allowed to be shared or share it with someone that wasn't allowed to be shared. Again, since we made this fairly broad, we can do this with, uh, right, a hotmail.com address should immediately go through. Again, we can make this very specific based on the requirements for the customer. So I do want to touch on the future-looking architecture that we, we talked about earlier. Um, so again, today we do have the gateway method, um, but we will also be implementing further functionality with ASAs as well. If you're familiar with the Cisco Cloud Web Security Solution, uh, which is basically a full uh, web security solution in the cloud, we'll actually be able to pull logs from that as well. So that's sort of the future-looking architecture, what can be available. Today, obviously, all of those are, all of these are available standalone. Um, and then we'll also be looking to further expand the proxy chaining functionality as well if, you know, as an admin, you don't want to use a pack file. So those are some of the, the offerings we'll have going forward. Um, obviously, if you guys have, I think we have some time for questions if we want to open that up now and then uh, we can go from there. Does anyone have any questions? All right, guys. Well, thank you for your time. If you guys have any questions afterwards, just go ahead and find us, and we'll be glad to help you guys out. Thank you.